Today on The Daily Bell Ringer, we're taking a look at Andrew Jackson. Hello, welcome to The Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. And also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So, Andrew Jackson, seventh president of the United States from 1829 to 1837, of course, a member of the Democratic Party. Um, Andrew Jackson, born March 15th, 1767 in South Carolina. And of course, while he's growing up, the American Revolution is going on. And if you know anything about the American Revolution, of course, that's right in the heart of the Carolina campaigns where Cornwallis is trying to march across the Carolinas, marching north. And so Andrew Jackson, along with his two older brothers, they both, both join in on the American side of the American Revolution. But actually, by the end of the war, Jackson is completely orphaned. His father had died before he was born. Uh, one of his brothers dies from a heat stroke. Another one dies from smallpox, which Andrew Jackson survives. And then his mom dies of cholera, all here as the American Revolution is going on. So by the age of 14, Jackson is an orphan. But by 1788, Jackson had gone to school, learned to be a lawyer, and he moves out to Tennessee. Of course, you got to think at this time, a lot of people are moving across the Appalachian Mountains, moving into areas like Tennessee and Kentucky. And so he moves to the area of Nashville, Tennessee. And in 1796, Jackson helps Tennessee to achieve statehood, and actually Andrew Jackson is the first person to be elected to the House of Representatives from the state of Tennessee. Now, Andrew Jackson was known for having a very hot temper and being involved in several duels. Actually, Jackson is our only president that we know of that killed a man. Of course, we have presidents that were involved in battles, and I'm sure were involved in, you know, someone being killed. But Jackson is the only one who, you know, we ver verify, yes, he did kill a man. Um, there's a guy named Charles Dickinson that in 1806 insulted Andrew Jackson's wife, Rachel. Well, Jackson, of course, challenges Dickinson to a duel. They go out and duel. Actually, Dickinson shoots Jackson first, and there's a bullet in Jackson's chest that remains there the rest of his life. But Jackson is able to get a shot off and actually kills uh, Dickinson. So it's in 1813 that Jackson is involved in this thing known as the Creek War, which was a, a war against Native Americans. He's victorious there, and of course, that leads to him then being chosen to be the leader of troops in the War of 1812 in the Western Theater of the War. And of course, he goes to New Orleans to defend it against the British, wins the big battle at New Orleans very decisively. And that's what really thrust him in the national spotlight is that big victory at uh, Battle of New Orleans. So in his efforts to become president, um, in 1824, he runs for president, of course, against John Quincy Adams. Remember, that election was so close that it had to be decided in the House of Representatives, and the House of Representatives goes with John Quincy Adams. Well, Jackson doesn't give up. He comes back in 1828 to run against uh, John Quincy Adams again. And this time, this is really considered to be the first election that's really truly like an election we have today, where the, the candidates are really throwing mud at each other, running smear campaigns, stuff like that. And so um, Jackson is able to win very easily. And he's considered to be really the first populist president. What I mean by that is a president that was really, you know, elected by the common man. He had a, a lot of people got excited and came out and voted for Andrew Jackson. And so instead of being part of, I guess you could say, like the political establishment or like, you know, that group of founding fathers of America, he's our first president that's outside of that group, all right? And so keeping in that theme for his inauguration, he actually, you know, basically opens the doors to the White House and everybody comes in and kind of just trashes it, just like, you know, a bunch of, I mean, I, I hate to say this, but hillbillies come stomping into the White House and they have a huge party uh, when he gets inaugurated. Now, even though he was a populist president and even though today he's on our $20 bill, Jackson is not necessarily a great president. And I say that because Jackson basically redefined what the presidency was all about. Uh, up until that point, a lot of people saw Congress as being where the voice of the people were at. Jackson saw it the other way around and said, no, the president is where the voice of the people are at, so the president should have more power. So the pre Jackson kind of ignored Congress and the other branches of government. And uh, he was a big, you know, uh, supporter of slavery, which of course is not, not a good thing. He's also uh, the one that's responsible for the Indian Removal Act, forcing the Cherokee Nation off their lands in uh, Georgia and leading to the Trail of Tears. In that case, of course, the Cherokee, they sued the federal government saying this is unconstitutional to take our lands, and they actually won. The Supreme Court sided with them, but Andrew Jackson said, well, the Supreme Court made their decision. Let's see him enforce it now. And he moves ahead with it. Um, he's also involved in this other issue known as the nullification crisis, where uh, South Carolina was basically threatening to leave the Union. Uh, threatening to become their own nation and just completely break away when they said they weren't going to pay a tariff or pay a tax on imported goods. And Jackson basically says, well, if you're not going to pay it, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take troops and I'm going to lead them into South Carolina and I'm going to force you to remain part of the Union. So again, we're already seeing, you know, civil war could be happening here uh, already. Um, he's also, you know, a big opponent of the National Bank. Uh, he kind of gets rid of that. Um, one interesting thing too about Jackson, of course, he had a cabinet of advisors 
but his actual cabinet of advisors was a group they called the Kitchen Cabinet, uh, were his buddies that he basically met with in the White House kitchen. So, uh, Jackson, he runs for re-election in 1832, uh, defeating Henry Clay, uh, but at the end of his presidency, uh, he retires to his plantation, the Hermitage, near Nashville, Tennessee, and actually he dies on June 8th of 1845 at the age of 78, and his actual cause of death was lead poisoning caused by those bullet, the bullet that was still there uh, in his chest from several years before. All right, so hopefully you learned something there. A lot about Andrew Jackson, some stuff I probably left out there, but hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.